Oh, and yes, in that order. <laughs> oh, you guys want to see what Joel got me from Sweden? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Before yep, we start. Yep, 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 yep. It says, Swedish uh, fish. how Sveg? the fuck... He, I think he told me how to say it. Svenj? Svenj? Sverige? It's Sweden. What is it? What? It's just Sweet. A, it's Sweden. It's, uh, <laughs> it's just moose, Sweden. Uh, it's a moose call. <laughs> well, he, he tried to tell me this is what a moose sounds Good like. Good lord. And then for five minutes, he just sat next to me and did this. <laughs> That's a, I, I can't. Also, you bought me this. <laughs> Do they know what cows are? Because I'm pretty sure that's like yeah. a cow noise. You know what it sounds like? Cow noises. Sounds like the cow from Toy Story 2 when you walked in th when he walked in through uh, like the <laughs> automatic oh, doors wow. and it, it moved. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it does sound like that. <laughs> that's that's actually they've actually bottled that noise in Sweden. Oh. That's what, that's what <laughs> All right, and on that, yeah, their no. most prized possession is a sound effect from Toy Story 2. <laughs> their cheap ex, their, their cheap export is uh, is ripped sound effects from. They, they won't even own up to Swedish fish. They've got IKEA. <laughs> and I bought this I is bought the Dill Swedish fish. You keep saying that's. Normal. I have a video. I have a video of me giving him Swedish fish. <laughs> <laughs> Has he ever had them? Yeah. <laughs> He, he keeps saying they don't have them in Sweden. Yeah, they're not from Sweden. He wants you to fucking know that. Like, yeah, he's he's very adamant about that. Yeah. I think also, I think also saunas are apparently a more of a finish thing. So he gets mad about this. I still I I like on Instagram. If you give that, if you give a sweet sauna picture, I just keep looking at it and laughing every yeah. time for some yeah. reason. I made uh, him go in there. I was like, <laughs> you're, you're going inside of this sauna. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get started here. I appreciate your retweets. Even if it's not a thousand, as I requested, yeah, what's <laughs> I'm not going to brand in this up for you. Um, <laughs> so, all right. I'd like to speak started. for Dan and say, fuck the KB Mod community for not getting us a thousand <laughs> retweets. <laughs> That's what I meant. All, <laughs> Mark's my PR all guy. Of these E3 articles, <laughs> all, all of these E3 articles are just shit. The games that they're looking forward to, they're all shit because they're all missing like the most exciting game of the year. Oh, God. That's good. <laughs> Fucking, they're all shit. Wow, what, what, what's the most? Oh, okay. Oh, Wildstar yes. does look good. I thought yes. we were gonna say the next Call of Duty. All right. Every I'm, trailer that I see of <laughs> Wildstar. Right. I'm gonna get this started okay. here with an intro and all that good stuff. So <laughs> let me count and down here. <laughs> I actually, I wasn't all that well. We'll talk about it. All right. So five, four, three. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Two, one, and welcome. I'm going to leave that on the audio. <laughs> welcome to the KB Mod Podcast, episode 96. Live. You may notice Scott is not doing the intro. I'm doing the intro this week because he is not here. He had prior obligations at Machinima this evening for E3 stuff. But we do have Nick Fenton. We have Blacklight Attack, Mr. Nick Jenkins, free of his ant problem. And we have John the from the normal cast. And then we have a couple guests this week. We have Eric Brunner. 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 <laughs> Whatever you want, professional, Whatever you want baby. Professional lacrosse <laughs> flair for the New York Giants. Yes. <laughs> professional <laughs> professional sweeper for uh, the Ontario curling team. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, <laughs> pro soccer player, the Houston Dynamo. And uh, we also have Mark Alsham Noow. I don't, now, I don't think my so introduction intern, matters same. because uh, <laughs> since Scott's not doing the intro and you are, everybody already clicked off. So yeah, everybody's <laughs> done. Yeah, nobody's <laughs> watching anymore. Thanks, um, Scott. <laughs> also, owe me a child support check. So <laughs> great, oh. dude. Great, dude. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that is who we have tonight. Brandon may be on at some point during this cast, but I, I do not know for sure. He just he went, well, he's on Skype. So, so pulling him in now. Son of a bitch. We're gonna See, have now, No, wait, but but we have to make sure that he takes his chair and mirror out of the his uh, window because if he doesn't, then we're gonna create a time paradox, and <laughs> and this Skype call is going. I to thought be it was gonna be like beta fish, like if the mirrors see each other, <laughs> they just fight. Well, actually I'm actually looking at Brandon right now, but you guys really don't know. Through that. the mirror, yeah. <laughs> they can see each other through the mirror. It's yeah. like it's like the. Uh, 
It's it's like the cabinets from Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the two way. Yeah. You can walk you can walk through your mirror and into Brandon's room. Mm -hmm. it's, instead of Narnia, it's just Brandon's office. It's some kind of shitty say. instead. <laughs> <laughs> um Brandon didn't answer, so fuck him, whatever. Um <laughs> Oh, he's on the train. Okay. Well, <laughs> Don't get on Skype on your phone, Brandon. On the train, he met a dame. Um, and he was like, hey, you want to fuck in front of so my So Brandon mirror? won't be on tonight. Luckily, that time paradox is avoided, at yeah. least for this evening. <laughs> I'm glad to still be alive. Thank you, Brandon, for not killing all of us. <laughs> so It's not really killing so much as ending our existence. We never existed in the first place. We yeah, were all just a figment sense. of the mirror. And yeah. that, that's the pretty much imagination. where it's gone. <laughs> um, so we're going to go around. Do our what what we've been doing this week. We'll start with uh, Nick cleanly shaven Fenton. I ain't played shit. <laughs> that's my answer. You did have orb like... in your house though, so yeah. that's. I played that's like an hour of Remember Me, and that's about it. You played hide hide the salami. How'd you like the hour? It's pretty good so far. I'm like, well, I'm a total of like two hours in. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just wait till you get to the first boss fight. Uh, is that Kid Christmas? Yes. Ah, uh, yes. I'm past and... that. Okay. And, and, the oh, second okay. boss fight's even worse. So <laughs> I think it was a bad boss fight. It, they're just, just boring as shit. They good? Listen, yeah. we, we went over this on my stream this week. The French cannot do boss fights. <laughs> Apparently can't. not. <laughs> look at look at Human Revolution. Is this Eidos, a French developer? Yeah. Yes, they're from Paris. Yes. Don't well, nods in Paris. And the then, boss uh, fights in Human Revolution weren't particularly bad. It was only bad if you were doing a non lethal run through. If you actually so had, didn't a you have variant. to kill the boss? Even if you're yeah, that was yeah. that was the problem because like it didn't count against your non-lethal playthrough. It was just that if you did a non-lethal playthrough, you spec your character completely non-combat oriented. You were all stealth oriented, and there was no stealth options during a boss fight. Yeah. So that it it was they were only bad if you played the game a certain way, which is really unfortunate. But if you were actually in a combat oriented role, then they were okay. Yeah, I don't know. I've played about eight hours of it, and can I? Can I tell you what I've watched this week? Yes, no. please do, Nick Fenton. Well, I saw Star Trek. Into, and then... into darkness. Yes, and that was pretty good. <laughs> shit. I was like, that was pretty good. How you I'm doing, not, like, shit. It's not going crazy about it, but the big movie that I saw this week was After Earth, which was <laughs> oh, here an we incredible go. <laughs> sensory overload. Mm. And, I, and by that, what I mean is just don't, like, don't spend your money on this movie. Like, <laughs> That's I went... what I mean. <laughs> I went in thinking it was going to be so bad that it would be enjoyable in a way. No, it was just, it's not bad enough to be fun to watch. It's just like mm. middle of the road bad. Like That's, dude, that's the it's worst bad. kind of bad. So it's like really two is. hours of just like really generic, like double Smith. Like bad formula. Acting. Yeah, come on. Come on like Jane boy. Smith is like, <laughs> hey man, I don't <laughs> I don't know what that a, was. Is that your impression? Is that is that the official? <laughs> hey guys, I'm Jaden. Hey man. Hey uh, man. So don't go don't go see uh, fucking After Earth. Don't like not even for it. fun because it's so bad. It's not as bad as the reviews are saying. It's just well, very Will not Smith can't even, good. Not even Will Smith can save an M Night Shyamalan movie. Well, the problem is in, <laughs> in the movie he's like a super monotone character. Well, he's like his he's face like a military doesn't change the pictures either. Have you seen yeah, it, it, yeah. It, they yeah, both like they both have like one face. Like Jaden <laughs> is like super, he's like super concerned. He's like, and then like Will Smith is just like, just like straight faced, like yeah, stone faced, yeah. And that's that's the movie. Shut up, Carlton. Yeah. <laughs> just, just it's just after chock it. full that, of after it's just chock full of horrible fresh prints. Like that, afterwards, well, I was like, I wanted this place. movie to be worse. I wanted that movie to be even worse than it was. It was a dis it, was, it was disappointing. It wasn't disappointing enough for me. The twist is that Will Smith is actually his the Will Smith character of Fresh Prince of Bel Air. That'd be amazing. <laughs> that, that's oh M Night Shyamalan twist. Would that Turns would out that, have that been good movie? movie? Is West Philadelphia? Need Carlton <laughs> and Carlton and Will Smith dancing will make a movie good. Alphonse Ribeiro, what a beast! Yeah, <laughs> it, it's got it's got him dancing. Thing. It's, the, they the need whole... to release a feature film of two and a half hours of the, just the Carlton dance, <laughs> yeah. and I would pay entry to that and uh, go there regularly. 
That would and be great. It's a sweet and dance. At the end, the dust settles, the giant final climactic battle is there, and then he just like he puts down a suitcase and just shows like a close up of his face. He puts down and he looks up, and then the camera pans around and he's at his house in Bel Air. And that's <laughs> that was it. The fight in West Philadelphia was the fight for Earth. Against <laughs> yeah. aliens or whatever it is. And that, also, uh, at, at any point in the movie, Will Smith did not say, Welcome to Earth! Like, yeah, that's one. bullshit. Not once. Not even when they crash landing, it could have been like, Hey, Jane, welcome to Earth! That would have been, like, <laughs> they could have just rolled credits. That would have been fine if that was the movie. He keeps calling his character son Jane, and he's like, Dad, it's not my name in the movie. That's <laughs> Stop it! Character. He's like, Shut up, Dad. Dad. Get the character, please. Dad, we're <laughs> acting. <laughs> we're, don't forget, we're acting, Dad. Shut up, Jaden. Don't tell me how to act. To act. <laughs> Will keeps telling Jaden to take out the garbage, but it doesn't matter because the Earth is completely fucked up. There's nowhere to put your yeah. garbage. It is all garbage. <laughs> what is wrong with you, Dad? Come on, Dad. Dad! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that was you, Nick Fenton. That was your yeah. week. That and you are going week. to E3, right? Yeah, not for business. Just for just leisure. Just for pleasure. pleasure. <laughs> for leisure. <laughs> leisure. The leisurely stroll of a high stress, loud environment. <laughs> exactly. Um, I mean, I have nothing to do there. I'm not doing yeah, anything. Yeah. Like, just gonna wait in lines, I guess. Nice. Nice. Stop spoiling the movie, someone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll go on. What about you, Mark? What have you done this week? Oh, wow. Uh, I have played a little bit of Remember Me. I think I have around two, two and a half hours or so. And most of that has been spent just mucking around and just uh, trying to at least look around at the city and just take in everything and then uh, being told where to go by those little orange markers on the walls and then I've yeah. got to go do that and then I've got to do some fights where I just keep spamming XX and X over and over again and then dodging <laughs> things and it's never fun like That's sleeping right. dogs got that combat system right really <laughs> but it, I yeah. felt the opposite oh but... no there's so like much sleeping variety dogs. in sleeping dogs though that you can if you are willing to take the effort to put in uh um more variety into your fighting uh, in sleeping dogs you can find a lot of ways to do it but in remember me it's literally just pressing a combo then then just backing off with your a to dodge a hit and then just doing it again it's just that repeated sequence. I, I don't disagree with you at all about Remember Me on the combat. And the, the first but... boss fight was so horrible because you could only beat him by getting your, um, wh yeah. whatever that overload thing is. That yeah. You've got to wait for it to fucking cool down. So to get your focus up, you've got to hit him with combos that are doing no damage. So you've got to spend at least 30 seconds to a minute hitting the boss over and over again, doing no damage to him to finally get your overcharge ability yeah. that allows you to do damage. It's, was, it's literally pointless. Was that the robot that you were playing against in the stream highlight, Dan? No. no Kid Christmas was... is the first boss. Um, he wasn't Kid as... Christmas. He wasn't as dumb as the robot. And then okay. uh, the third boss fight, if you thought the first two were repetitive, oh, dear Lord, the third one is, like, <laughs> just an experience in frustration. Like, yeah, I, I got past Kid Christmas and then I stopped. Uh, but it, I'm not... I'm not happy to continue on, but I've been, I, I was thinking of doing Remember Me as like a, an idea into a foray of a review, but not mm -hmm. necessarily a review, but taking a comedic uh, yeah. review outlook, and I was trying to do Remember Me as that thing, and it's turning out perfect. I've got a lot of joke material for this game if I ever commit to doing this video but project, because it's fucking bad. <laughs> I, I actually don't think the game is that bad. I think the combat is that bad. But it is. I actually, it, I like everything else. I enjoy. I like the story a lot, actually. And you haven't gotten to the where I'm at yet. I don't believe. No. I'm like no. eight hours into it, so I only have a couple hours left. But uh, the uh, the story gets quite good near the end, um, or I think I'm near the end at this point, anyway. But what we were saying in the stream when I was streaming it is that game should have just not done the combat at all and just had it be heavy rain. With memory remix sequences, because so those that those are the that best first, sequences oh, in the game. God, that memory remix scene! Holy shit! Like just that concept. Well, it not even the concept, but the way that it played out inside. Whenever you did remix something, and the way that the camera always panned around just so perfectly around the scene yeah. that you just remixed. Like it was just so beautifully done. But there's only four in the game. Like yeah. they could have done so many more with that. And I've done, I think, three of the four, maybe all four at this point. 
Um, but the, the remixes are the best thing about it, and they should have just... It's a good first game for them, and I think they should just make another game where all you do is do memory remixes <laughs> the whole time. For those yeah. who don't know what we mean by memory remix, because it just sounds weird, um, your character can actually go into people's heads, and to try to change their mind or get information, she can change memories, um, <laughs> things that happen. And so ah. there's, like, cues in these scenes, and you can rewind and fast-forward, and then you can move like you know a piece of furniture or take the safety off a gun or um make a sit like all kinds of different things the first one which i mean this isn't much of a spoiler if you don't want to play the first one you make uh this bounty hunter who's after you think that her husband was killed by the doctors instead of helped so yeah and she goes on your side so that's like kind of but there's only four there's only four in the entire (laughs) game which (laughs) so they're like i mean it's like an ultra ball basically is what you're saying they're kind of pre-scripted but you can it's a lot of trial and error at least yeah yeah it, the first one actually took me like four tries because I, at first i was thinking do i just remix the first thing that comes up but now you can go very far back and alter several things so yeah. sometimes you might mess up and think one thing will actually change the the memory to fit what you're trying to do but then it doesn't it. so you've got to rewind again so it's kind of like a logic puzzle yeah, yeah sort of that's mm-hmm. cool yeah. So is that, is that all you played this week, Mark? Uh, no, I have played 4 Delta 1 quite yes. a lot. Um, <laughs> I have played Rising Storm, and I have also played... Uh, what's the other game that I've played? No, that's it. Well, also Dead Rising 2, because I'm still doing a Let's Play of that. So that's uh, I've been playing quite a few games this week. So Rising Storm has it... For those who don't know, that's a I've, standalone standalone sequel, sort of, uh, to Red Orchestra. So, okay, so the way that it works is if you, uh, if you have Red Orchestra 2, you can play Rising Storm, uh, but you're limited to the Rifleman class, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so that gives you a chance to try it out, and it really doesn't matter because Rising Storm is all infantry combat anyways. There's no vehicle combat. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you have Red Orchestra 2 which you should. I mean, it's a good game. And it's been on so many sales, I don't see why anybody wouldn't have gotten it at some point through like a... I think I got it through a Humble Bundle, actually. Mm -hmm. I didn't just buy it outright. Uh, But you can try out Rising Storm maps uh, playing the Rifleman class. Um, But the difference in that, in Rising Storm, is that it's asymmetrical uh, weaponry. So Mm -hmm. the Japanese, you know, don't have as many automatic weapons. They're stuck with bolt action and and, and shit like that. Um, and the Americans don't have things like bayonets on their gun, w- which you can unlock as you go along and you uh, earn more into your classes. You can get the bayonets uh, like the Japanese do on their guns. But there's some really fun shit in there uh, to do, like bonsai charging as the Japanese. Like getting 30 <laughs> people to do a bonsai charge and, and just storm a territory objective is the coolest thing because of all of the screams that are happening, and it suppresses the Americans, so it makes them aim a little worse and you also take less damage so it can just completely turn a game around when you do it correctly yeah um but it's it's still really hard i've only had one bonsai charge like completely uh succeed in, <laughs> in, with a full team doing it uh but i mean if you're into a hardcore game it's yeah, one it's of the better ones out there realistic it's there. uh oh. whenever you play on a realistic server uh if you don't know the maps and you don't understand exactly what you're supposed to be doing with your uh class you're gonna die because uh, does people it still will run like you. shit uh no i i haven't had any problems with the game in terms of frame rate or anything like that i mean it's an unreal engine game and it's capped at 62 frames a second mm-hmm. uh but i've never dropped below that no matter what's going on artillery uh somebody's slamming me with a flamethrower nothing nothing has dropped my frame rate but i guess it's going to depend on hardware i haven't Really looked around at uh, what well, other I people only have two series so I guess I'm yeah I think you're fine, it. John. I'm pretty sure you're okay. <laughs> oh, but I mean, like six months ago, I couldn't run the game for shit. They oh, put out some problem. big patches. Well, I I did uh, in the chat. I heard uh, I saw somebody mention that it uh, was a little wonky on 1440p. So I guess if you play at that resolution, it may have some problems. But I don't. I play at 1080p, and it's been perfectly fine. Where's I haven't Scott had any to commentate on 900p. <laughs> to, on 900p. Yeah. Oh, what yep. a professional! But yeah, if you're if you're not into getting killed at 150 meters because you didn't properly use cover, then don't play the game. But it, it it's going to be frustrating for the first hour, and then once you learn how to work things, then you'll be fine. 
Yeah. Um, people might be intimidated by the fact that it might seem like you have to run everywhere if you die, but you don't if you have a decent squad leader that's keeping himself alive. Uh, yeah. Because your squad leaders are mobile spawn points, and if you have a decent squad leader, then you can pretty much stay in the fight even if you die, and it won't be that much downtime. I mean, it's a really good. Me to take the shot. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely telling you to take the shot. That's it's uh, what is it? Twenty bucks. If you own yeah. Red Orchestra Two, it's cheaper. Uh, you get a it's discount. Like Eleven or something. Yeah, it's. Yeah. I got it for twelve dollars when it was in beta, uh, but I think it's around like fourteen something right now on full release. Uh, but it's definitely worth it. I've already got like. 20 to 30 hours in it and I still nice. love playing it and there's not many hardcore games out there that can interest me so I would definitely recommend Rising Storm there we go alright what about you Eric what have you been up to this week um, I got back into World of Warcraft a little not bit not bad yeah, solid um, and just been grinding trying to to, to level up to 90 um, been playing play a little Counter Strike CSGO, um, TF2, I've been doing a lot, a little bit more of that lately. Attaboy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, th that's thanks to John's fat cock. Because, uh, um, and then uh, some Might StarCraft. John. <laughs> and, and StarCraft. Um, yeah. The normal. I mean, I don't, I don't get tons of time to do stuff, so when I yeah. do it, I stick to like the normal games. I got that him. I got him to pick up a nice 144 hertz monitor this week. That's right. I got some new. Uh, I got some new parts for the PC too. I got a new video card. I got a seventy-nine seventy. Uh, nice. Nice. And then nice. Uh, a new power supply, and then uh, a new monitor. And the fiance does not know how much all that costs yet. So <laughs> <laughs> let's keep that under wraps. Keep that under wraps. Hopefully she doesn't but, watch this podcast. <laughs> yeah, she's actually like, "What the fuck, Eric?" <laughs> nah, she's she, she's cool with it. So, uh, but yeah, so just that. Had no problems with putting it together, which was interesting. So that was good. As far oh, another game too. And I just found out I didn't know you could play it on the Mac. Obviously, I, I travel with a Mac on the road just because it's easier, mm -hmm. um, and then it's not as bulky and everything like that. Well, I found out uh, you can uh, play Binding of Isaac on it. So, yes. So I've yes. been playing that on the plane, and it's real funny when they're, I'm shooting a piece of poop on the screen <laughs> I, have a, I have like a grandmother sitting next to me so. <laughs> what's that Too oh, nothing dearie <laughs> is that so, a yeah. fetus attached to your head shooting extra bullets <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly yes. oh so that, that game's I, badass so, yeah. so that game's fun to me I'm having a lot of fun with it I'm probably just gonna get it on my PC and start playing it too so it, is, it was cheap man I got it, it like, a, right before we got on the plane and I was it like, is a oh, crack addiction of a game just yeah. letting you know now. Yes. <laughs> to, uh, it, it. Shoot me up. Yeah. I yeah, it, it was funny because the other night I, I asked Dan if he wanted to play Call of Duty, and he said, uh, I'm actually going to go to bed after this one life in Binding of Isaac. He was still on Steam for like another hour after telling me that. And like, I won. I won. Stop. It was a winning <laughs> yeah, run. he beat it. <laughs> yeah, it was a winning run. So I had, uh, I forget, I had like 42 soul hearts. So it was a good run. It was solid beat the shit out. I had mom's knife and stuff. I wasn't about to stop. Not with mom's knife. <laughs> Crazy. You can't quit. <laughs> <laughs> but How many items are they up to in that game? It's like 330 or something. something, I think. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Lord. I don't know why I know that. I, I only have play. like 200 unlocked, actually. Because I haven't done a lot of the challenges and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I've only beat the game with two characters. I guess that's why you see channels that have Let's Plays of Binding of Isaac that have like 2,400 mm -hmm. episodes. Yep. Yeah, because Northern of the weapon variety. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Northern and it will be guy. different every time. Yeah, yep. that's crazy about it. Yep. Yeah, the getting you get certain items like Epic Fetus or different or different ones like that, and it's just like once you get an Epic Fetus for the first time, it's like that. That's easy mode. I got it before a podcast once with like ten minutes to spare, and uh, what it does is it launches missiles instead of tears, um, and you can target them, and. It's just the GG button is all it is. So we got it with like 10 minutes to spare with the podcast and and uh, beat the game in 10 minutes or something <laughs> like that. Because we just ran over everything. But uh, 198? I swear it's more than that, dude. It's got to be more than that. <clears throat> At least 100 more coming in the remake. Oh, yeah, Eric, if you didn't know, there's a remake of that game coming. Really? Yeah, they're doing yeah. a 16-bit art style. and. Uh, oh, that would be cool. 
Oh yeah, man, co-op. they're stepping up their game. <laughs> <laughs> co-op as well. It'll be co-op. So yeah, I've been watching. Uh, and I just been watching a lot of streams when I'm uh, like we traveled this past yeah. weekend, and then I was in Columbus for doing wedding planning stuff. Ironically, just like kind of, I'm I'm basically fill, filling in seamlessly for for Brandon right now. Yeah, really. <laughs> um, but uh, so we did. Uh, so I couldn't really play games, so I was watching a lot of streams. Um, saw saw John play a little bit of scrims and whatnot i was trying to bug him but he didn't like it it's like i'm not playing i'm subbing <laughs> got real email i'm not i'm i'm not i'm not Here you playing full time this season hey but i was cheering time. for you i was cheering for you like you cheer still, for me i'm still fucking incredible yeah. <laughs> yeah. he was good he was leading this team in deaths <laughs> I'm the aggro scout if I'm not leading. Well, technically the roamer should be leading in deaths, but our roamer's like the best player in the world, so. I'm JK, John. <laughs> Fucking tech nasty, man. Fucking Matthew Lorenzini. You're not, you're not a pro roamer unless you're roaming with the cow mangler, sorry. See you, <laughs> cow mangler. Five, five shots and fucking... Reduce damage on the I think I asked effects. this question before, but in competitive TF2, is it, does it it's like just standard rollouts, right? Like you're not allowed to do uh, like zany mm, weapons, are you? You can. Zany. I mean, some they're, weapons are banned, but a lot of weapons aren't banned. They're just useless. They're, weapons they're, that you yeah. think would be overpowered are actually probably useless. Yeah. Like yeah. you would you would think that like sending a pyro to mid might be a good thing, but it's actually just fucking terrible. I, like sending there, a heavy to mid is probably terrible, depending on who you are. There is a really awesome frag movie that I like from a guy who just it, it was like it was a troll frag movie and he uh, he he's a pyro maid, but he was like he was like off glassing and stuff and you see him as spy <laughs> like going to mid on a what was it maybe gully wash no it wasn't gully wash I forget the name of the map but he's he's in mid and he's he's running around as spy and on the screen just pops up spy to mid is a great strategy because not even my team expects me to be this gay he didn't even <laughs> tell his team he was switching spy he just shows up and fucking picks their medic and their rumor and just just fucking goes <laughs> or no it was their medic and I think their demo actually it was pretty good a guy's named carpet he, he makes some really carpet. good videos Carpet's yeah, exactly. one of those sweet names that I wish I had chosen for my internet handle instead. Yeah, yeah he's, like he's pretty good. Um, uh, his, uh, he's, he's a pyro main, but um, I think for sixes he, he mains roamer. Yeah, sure. I like your esports terms, dude. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, all right, so, Blacklight, what have you been playing? TF2 is always, I'm pretty much the same as last week. TF2, a uh, little bit of uh, Don't Starve, which... Um, uh, I'm kind of like I'm kind of reaching Isaac levels of addiction that that you experienced, um, and I'm getting really frustrated because I haven't like beaten it yet. I don't think you ever technically beat Don't Star. I think it's just set a high day or whatever. I don't think you. I I think what happens is um, so the world is randomly generated, but it's not procedurally generated like Minecraft. Um, mm -hmm. It's randomly generated when you first start the game, and it'll just generate a set world. And the worlds actually aren't that big. It's still pretty hard to explore the whole thing without dying, but. Um, they, they aren't really all that big, but what happens is as you explore, you start to find things called things. It's like the wooden thing, the, I think, metal <laughs> thing. And when you put five things, you can yeah. activate this portal that brings you to a new world. And that'll, okay. that'll randomly generate a second world and then just start there instead. And that's kind of like an achievement to actually activate the portal. And I think like you get some sort of like rare items for doing it. I, I can't really remember. Um... Well, I, I will follow you. He says you have to go through Maxwell's portal and survive the five worlds in the portal, and that's how it goes. Yeah, I think I think if you get that far, you actually unlock unlock uh, Maxwell, who's like, he's like he kind of looks like a vampire. I'm not sure if he's supposed to be a vampire, just like a, a dude, but Maxwell is like the bad guy who is the reason you're just stranded in the wilderness with all these monsters. He just he like kidnaps you and just like throws you in the middle of the woods. Um, but I haven't even come close to that. I haven't even gotten past the first world yet, so. Um, but it's also one of those games where, like, once you get rolling, it's, it becomes a lot easier because once you've established, like, a food source and you can get, like, mm -hmm. a farm going and you have an ice box so that you can preserve your food longer and last through the winter, then once you're established and, and, you know, rooted in, you've got some good gear to actually fight, then it, it becomes a lot easier. Um, I just... And, uh, Sorry, I, I just couldn't get into it because, like, with Isaac, for me, part of it is the pace of it. I yeah, guess. yeah, the pacing is but, way, way 
Yeah. Like, if I'm going to play a game like Don't Starve, I just want to play Minecraft. <laughs> like, <laughs> where I can kind of just go at my own pace. But in, in Don't Starve, I don't think it's a bad game. It's just, like, not my not my yeah, style no, of it. But, like, I felt a lot of stress when playing Don't Starve. <laughs> it's yeah, just, like, it is. It's a very stressful yeah, game. Cause I've, like, I've found it hard to uh, commit a lot of time in one sitting to the game, but the art style and the... Mm -hmm. Uh, the music and the way that the sounds work for the the characters when they talk, and it's like, yeah, oh, he just sure. sounds like a trumpet. Like that appeals to me so much, but yeah. I just haven't found that one thing in the game that makes me want to sit down and play it for like two or three hours at, uh, hours at a time. It's usually yeah. only like thirty minutes to an hour. See, with me, I I sit down and I play it for like thirty minutes to an hour, and then I'm like, all right, I should probably end this play session. And I was <laughs> like, you know, I'll I'll end once I've once I've completed this goal, and then I'll play for another like two hours. Mm -hmm. it's like I always feel like I'm about to end my play session and I never do. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a very appealing game if you're into that kind of thing. It's it is very. I don't know. I I recommend it to anybody who's looking for a good rogue. Like I think it's like fifteen dollars right now. Yeah, it'll go to like five on a Steam sale. I bet. Yeah, yeah. Well, coming soon. Steam sales probably oh, yeah, like a month happens. away. Yes. You know. Usually on usually going on on my birthday, which is usually during summer camp. Yes. Yes. Nice. I June, hope I don't miss last too many week days. of June. Mobile app. Uh, you mobile can mobile app, it. That's true. I could mobile, mobile app it. Just mobile it. It's 19th century. <laughs> mobile it. <laughs> All right. um, I, uh, I did get to play a little bit more Dust. I I'm looking to, to play that a little bit more. And I really like the combo tail. system. In the game. Yeah, it's a good game. I, yeah. I, I finally figured out how to basically like infinite fly while comboing, which is fun. Because if you space out your Dust Storms in midair long enough, um, you, can, you can go without taking damage and just fly infinitely. It's pretty great. Yep. Yeah, until uh, you hurt yourself. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If you if you learn how to time it, you're better than me. So <laughs> I'm I'm absolutely better than you at that game. Mm -hmm. uh, that that's not even. I should play. I should get a fight stick and question. play with a fight stick. I was thinking about off. doing that. I I still have a fight stick from my Xbox 360 days that will that works on USB. So yeah, I was I was thinking about that. Also, I hear Skullgirls is coming to Steam. It is uh, coming to Steam, which excites Ooh. me because I'll finally be able to to play a fighting game with a fight stick. That art style is so good, man. I've, I've been I, wanting I that love game. the art style of that game. It's been yeah. over a year since they promised the PC it's, version. And... It's all hand drawn. It's so good. It looks so good. Yep. Um. Yeah, they they were really slow. I think they didn't really match the sales. They didn't have they any expected. money, but either. Yeah. If, if for those who don't know, I forget possible. who the name of the dev is, but Skullgirls is yeah. one of the the most. Um, their Kickstarter was very controversial because it was asking for a lot of money, and it was for five DLC characters, and I think they asked for five hundred thousand, and Jesus then they Christ. actually broke it down, and it was actually yep. less than they needed. Like so, that whole dev team for that game, they work out of their apartments and share stuff over like Google Docs and stuff for meetings. Like they yeah. are living on a shoestring. Come on, guys! They're game, still so. using AOL Mail. <laughs> they're, they're they're still using the thirty seven thousand free internet so, hours. So when <laughs> when they the, when those dudes <laughs> who did Metro were bitching about their office conditions or whatever, they have yeah. an office though. Whereas yeah. these guys don't even have an office. They're just working out of their homes. So um, kind of crazy. So Yeah, I never, I never, uh, I've heard a lot about Skullgirls, but I never actually looked it up. And now I'm on their website looking at uh, screenshots. And this is the fucking coolest looking thing ever. Yeah. I really yeah. like this art style. Yep. It's really cool. It's got kind of like that, like a little bit of the gothic horror kind of thing going on. It's got a little mm -hmm. bit, little it's Isaac, very cartoony, little a little bit of anime. Because it's real yeah, gross. Almost. There's a lot of real gross shit in it, actually. Yeah, there's like one chick that's just Is like a, a stitched together corpse. I don't know if there's <laughs> pooping. There might be. Might be. I don't know. It's <laughs> like pooping. I, I, I was looking at the guy, the guy who does the art for that game, I was looking at his art portfolio when they were, like, hyping up the game, and apparently his whole thing is, like, he's like, he's like a fat girl fetish porn artist. <laughs> it's like, he, he actually draws porn of like big girls and like you can kind of see it like a lot of the girls are very like curdy and like it's an all female cast and like a lot of them are very yeah. sexualized but a lot of them have like a little bit of chub to them and you're like that guy really likes big girls dude Which is, <laughs> I mean more power to you but it's it's kind of entertaining yeah. to think about and um all right uh the last thing is Fire Emblem on the 3DS that's that's God. been my work game what a fucking game <laughs> Not a PC they game, but portable gaming. Lol. Hey, when I'm at work, it's absolutely fantastic. The only things I do at work, aside from actual work, are Fire Emblem and trading on TF2 Outpost because I can't run <laughs> actual TF2 on my laptop. So, <laughs> so all right. Talk. Last, well, not last, but John. 
What have you been doing? Last. <laughs> uh, a little bit of TF2, a little bit of Rift. I haven't really done much. I saw, I saw you hop on, I, on Infinite the other day. I don't know how long you were yeah, on yeah. it, though. I was just testing to see how it ran in SLI compared to, like... When Probably I was pretty missing well. one card, so <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I don't, I don't drop below like 160. You should finish that but game for a, sure. The late, the lady's like family right is now. in is in town, so I haven't been able to like play much. Yeah. They came to visit from the old Pittsburgh, PA. So solid town, I the guess. motherland. I, <laughs> but I hate I. There's, there's just zero. no time to have fun. I did manage to have bone doggles while they were here. That was nice. 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 Took her to the bone yard. Straight <laughs> to the pump house. All pump right. house and but, yeah. I'm leaving for E three tomorrow, so I won't play anything all week either. Well, you'll leave, be among games at least. Yeah. You'll yeah, be I'll, no, I'll be among I'll be among alcohol. It's fucking dreadful. <laughs> Those events are just the worst. People are like, Oh, it's gonna be so much fun. It's fun like the first day and then you feel terrible you for the next hang three out with days. Jared? No, Jared Gertz, absolutely. No. I will. I will be nowhere near him. <laughs> Swearing I don't off Jared know. Garrison. He text, yeah. Actually, let me. Let's read his text from last night. It was. It was. <laughs> it was something interesting. He says. Wait, wait. Where is this? He says. Every night we will drink, and you will have a fourteen-day hangover. Ha 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 ha. ha. <laughs> except, except with Jared Garrison, those ha ha's do not mean he's kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's not. He's not kidding. He's actually laughing at your misery. Like that. Yeah. He's not joking. He's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's like an evil. That's an evil scientist laugh. That's uh, he's that's planning. The he's planning laugh. on ruining me. Yeah. Because yep. he made me go to strip club with him the first time we oh, ever God. met, and I was hungover for a week. <laughs> so, glory days, bro. So John didn't. John didn't get much, but he got a little gaming done. And uh, got I got some rift. This is so good. Free to play this week. Free to play in three days. Rift. Yes, and also Neverwinter goes full release soon. People yeah, are I should re-download that. So. that. But, uh, computer. nah. What did I do? I played Remember Me. We already talked about that. Um, I dropped a nuke in Modern Warfare 2 because I'm the best player ever. Um, and Oh, but, yeah, I played, I played one map. I, I played <laughs> one map on Fort Delta 1. I installed it. I started the game off 25-0, and 0, but I wanted to keep going for the rest of the game, so I got my nuke right away. I wanted to go the rest of the game. Well, I actually, I lied. I played a game before that so I could do like the one kill level up to max level or whatever. Yeah. And then I played a game. I got my nuke and I was like, I'm going to keep playing until I die. And then some other guy calls in a nuke and ends the game. So I quit and I uninstalled it and I haven't played since. <laughs> I'm not going to play it again. get the call of this nuke and he's done. <laughs> oh, done. man. Quit. So, yeah, I haven't done much besides that. Had some good Isaac runs, but Remember Me was the main thing. And uh, we already we already spoke on that. So on that note, we're going to take a quick two-minute break here. And then we will be right back with E3 stuff. So stick around. Be right back. Are there quick two-minute breaks and long two-minute breaks? Yes. Because I think they're the <laughs> same length. According to TV. <laughs> <laughs> Don't change the channel. It's only a quick two-minute break. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> please don't please touch that don't dial. leave <laughs> oh, lots of interesting news this week though yeah well we didn't even mention the uh i hope the nsa is enjoying this podcast right now i really do <laughs> yeah. it's mind-blowing isn't it i have yep. buddies like nerd buddies in there in the, in the league and they're like tweeting out like uh because he, he goes on reddit as well and yeah and one day he's yes. like i wonder what was going on <laughs> That's why you hear me not saying much today, because they're <laughs> fucking recording it. They're in you. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I've heard that one too many times. <laughs> I hope the NSA watches my YouTube commentaries. God, I hope, I they, hope they do, actually. Yeah. That'd You're really subbed by so many members of the government. I bet the I wonder... NSA was putting bets on that war that you and Nick had for the number one source for <laughs> ticks and, tips and tricks. We, we, we should <laughs> supply him with drones. That's that's exactly what they were thinking. <laughs> what, if, what if, like, what if who, who do you think that, that guy listening to some of, like, the stupid shit? And he's just fucking, do you think he's just cracking up? Like, what in you the You know fuck? there's some dude who's sitting there monitoring Facebook, and he's just like, all oh, these goddamn 13-year-old girls. <laughs> Why are there Jesus go- Christ. Why are there duck lips everywhere? <laughs> I need to get out of here. 
that guy has gone insane. That guy, whoever is the dude monitoring Facebook, that guy is in a world of hurt right now. He lost his mind already. <laughs> oh shit, it's married season. Fucking nine million photos being posted on Facebook. I can go through and see if there's a terrorist in one of them. If I see another new baby photo. <laughs> Uh, oh god that guy's life is shit like i'm just seriously like what he's doing is pity that person yeah you actually i kind of feel bad for that guy (laughs) i'm one of the smartest people in the world and i gotta read facebook all day (laughs) he's like an international like james bond spy who's got like 35 confirmed kills and he's reading that like (laughs) daryl jaredson has is is revving up for spring break like (laughs) It's complicated between Jane and Fred. Yes, it's yeah. complicated. It's the spy that fucked up one mission, and now he's the yeah. guy on the Facebook. <laughs> what's, what's that movie with with Eddie Murphy and Owen Wilson? Oh, oh, sounds like know. a movie I wouldn't watch. Yeah, exactly. like, yeah. Spy Safe, something, I forget. Safe House with Ryan Reynolds. That's Ryan Reynolds. He's essentially just monitoring. If anyone has seen Safe House, it's actually I Spy. Good That's it. I Spy. Oh, yeah. no good. Yeah, prom season. That guy that guy just shoots himself when prom season ends. <laughs> I can't do this again this year. Can't do it. So I see one more damn corsage. <laughs> <laughs> they have to replace that guy every three years because they keep like killing themselves. It's just like they actually have it on a schedule now. It's they actually have higher the... suicide rates than Chinese workers. It's do. actually yeah, it's actually the hardest job in the NSA. Like <laughs> the the psychological tests for that you have to pass like so many. Because they want to make sure you don't snap instantly. It's like, <laughs> did you see J- uh, the Born Identity? Whenever they uh, took Jason Bourne through the ropes to get him prepared for that, like it's ten times worse than what Jason Bourne went through to go through Facebook posts. Yeah. It yeah. started yeah. with MySpace, though. Yeah. <laughs> God, those were the worst. That was the worst days. You thought uh, you had it hard back then. Wait till you have it now. <laughs> the, the fucking blingy esque pages that you have to go through with the nickelback <laughs> music that starts immediately. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That'd Some of you guys worst. might be too young for my space there in the chat, but some guy some guy who uh had that job back then, he wakes up in the middle of the night going, Look at this photograph <laughs> <laughs> like, He just he just sweating that he's like sweating profusely. <laughs> he's just like oh. This life is just this is every night this is every night <laughs> you gotta get me out of here all right all right that was our shout out to the nsa so hopefully you guys are yeah. watching i hope um, you guys are enjoying the show hope you guys are enjoying the show welcome um, i would just like to state that i hate terrorism what, what if all of a sudden he, one guy popped in just into our into our skype <laughs> skype phone goes you guys are great Keep <laughs> you, guys, back out. you guys are keeping me sane through all this prom season spam <laughs> thank you bros um <laughs> you guys need to lay off call of duty man <laughs> quit bitching about effect. call of duty uh <laughs> all right so e3 is this week in case you didn't know um <laughs> but john will be there nick will be there uh, Scott will be there. Brandon will be there. As far as regular members of the cast, they will all be at E3, and there's going to be a lot of stuff. Now, a lot of it, obviously, there's going to be the big press conferences from uh, from Sony and Microsoft, but there is a lot of other. There's just a lot of games, as as you would imagine. Um, so basically, we're going to talk about what we're looking forward to, and uh, I don't know if I should do it in a roundtable sense, but I already know what Nick Fenton's going to see it, say. Because I think I know what his most anticipated game is at E3. Maybe I'm wrong though. But uh, so go ahead, Nick. Do you you looking for that Mirror's Edge? Is that what you're? Yeah, that potential Mirror's Edge. It's being hinted at. Like there's like a thing that came out today, and Dice was like, "We got surprises, dogs." And I was like, <laughs> "Shit, Mirror's Edge two? Is it Mirror's Edge 2? <laughs> That's basically all I'm doing. And like. I'm like 90% on Mirror's Edge 2. I'm like 60% on Halo 5. Oh, Halo uh, 5 is definitely, definitely going to be Like announced. 60% on Halo 5 right now. Are you saying excitement level or like chances it will actually be? Chances that it'll get revealed right now. Maybe. I don't know. It, uh, I feel like it's probably more than 60%. Maybe, yeah. like, maybe like 75. Yeah, I think. Um, what else is... I don't, I don't even know. I feel like I'm just going to like 
see things and that will make me excited. I don't really know anything off the top of my head. Do they do? John more, was more Elder Scrolls Online. Got to see some more of that. Got to see Wildstar because that's going to be the new WoW. Wildstar will reinvigorate <laughs> MMOs in the United States. Is that going to be North free to America. play? They haven't announced yet, and I yeah, hope it's have... a subscription based. I do too. <laughs> I hope so it's, it's generally based better quality it'll keep when it idiots is. Away. Yes. Yep. Yes, it will keep so, idiots away. I'm perfectly okay with paying a $15 subscription to an MMO that's good. I think it would be best if they released the game free and then made you sub. That would be the best way to yeah. do it. Like, don't make me yeah. pay 60 and free. then the sub. Like, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a big turnoff for people that want to get into World of Warcraft at any point. Is like, oh, you've got like four or five expansions that you've got to purchase along with the main mm -hmm. game, and then you've got to pay a sub. It's just it's a big paywall at first if you are coming into it new at this point, which I don't really suggest to anybody to come into WoW at this yeah. point in time. Yeah, it's like what like eighty dollars to get everything right now or something. I, th like that. I think they they have had points where like they fifty to a battle chest <laughs> where everything's together now. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's. I don't think th I think I think they released the battle chest after Wrath of the Lich King, but that still leaves two expansions unaccounted for. They well, got I, to purchase they might separately. have just recently updated to a battle chest that has everything gotcha. except for mists. I could be wrong. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it would make sense. So, yeah, Mirror's Edge two. I would be very interested in Mirror's Edge two. Although I, I haven't even played the first one, but I love the concept of the first one. And then it felt like it just kind of got left there. I think it'd and... just be good for Dice and EA. It'll just show them that they're like not afraid it's... to go to something that's not necessarily going to sell incredibly well, because that's not like Dice's big, right, like, title. Their big so, franchise, I mean, yeah. Um, considering Mirrors that sold pretty decently, but like not as much as their other games have. But... Yeah, yeah. So. Got Halo, we got Mirror's Edge. What about you, Mark? I know you were loving the Call of Duty reveal today. You were very much I mean, a fan of it. I'm still going to get the game like <laughs> yeah. I do every Call of Duty because I don't know. It's just one of those games that I like to play because it's bullshit and yeah. I could play it for an hour and get some fun well, out of it. But Here was my whole thing. Did that game seriously just parody itself today, though? Like, <laughs> I'm not even shitting on the game. I'm not. Don't take this the wrong way. I'm I was just yeah. like baffled by what i was watching like the dog like pushing the dog so hard yes the fact like, that the dog had a goddamn hashtag like i don't understand their mindset i don't know if they take themselves seriously or if they that's what i'm still saying. want us to care about call of duty because if they want us to really think that their game is that great then i really feel bad for them because they've been doing this how long now and they still haven't accepted that their games are just bad and if they accepted that they were bad and just took it over it like if they did to call of duty what saints row did uh, what volition did to saints row the third yeah like then then everybody would love call of duty for the right reasons and nobody would laugh at infinity ward or treyarch but they are a laughing stock they really are yeah i mean their game is a joke but they don't take it as a joke so it's yeah that it's, was it was got really me. sad was to see like, like dog and, this is and the, the popularity is finally slipping they, they they no longer have that we are so big we can't fail. I think thing. you know they the, the... Uh, I don't know. I think they still might be pretty successful because well it's like going to sell like, millions. Yeah, of it's going to yeah, I mean, <laughs> Will it outsell like what they had before? No, but to them, really, does it? I mean, well, they make a small yeah, dent. I'll be honest. This They're one may out, this one may outsell know. simply that, because it's going to be on the yeah. new consoles. Yeah, that, that's the thing too, man. That's true. They We're haven't had be... one that undersold the the last, so yeah. <laughs> I don't think. No, I feel like this yeah, is the time where they're gonna. I feel like this is the time where it's gonna. They're gonna have really? small sales. Yeah, you're not gonna have as many people having your brand new console because it's it's expensive. It's more expensive, but, but it's yeah. not a, It's not exclusive. I don't think. No, no. It don't. It'll no, just, it'll, uh, it'll, no. But if, well, you're, if you're buying a new console, is getting purchased is on consoles. Yeah. That's, if you yeah. have if you have the new console, why are you going to want to buy a game that looks like this? Whenever you there's games out there that are going to be utilizing the hardware in the new console. Yeah, yeah. Well, like pizza, also, the, well, the entire the excitement yeah, of a new console is the new visuals and. But I mean, and, uh, <laughs> butt pressing because it's the best. <laughs> yeah, I doubt anything's been said, but I would imagine that Activision and Microsoft are going to do a deal where Call of Duty has its own version of the Xbox One when it comes out that yep. gives you Call of Duty. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure that DLC exclusivity will c continue. I mean, I'm sure that will be the case as well. But, uh, but. yeah, I, I mean, 
when it, if you ask like a random person who really isn't into that many games, but they may play a game, if you ask them what they play, it's yeah. Call of Duty and Madden. That's what yeah. it is. It's those two games. Yeah. So Call of Duty is always going to be popular for because uh, it just appeals to that demographic as well. Yeah. It was like bad before, gamers, I mean, bad players. Like PC, yeah, like I think PC gamers a long time ago. When I was in like middle school, like the the one game if you where that you asked was, they'd say Half Life. You know what I mean? So yeah. like it was yeah. like the generic yeah. one and like, like Diablo. Commander, and, and Diablo yeah. and Command and Conquer maybe like those were like yeah. the three yeah. that me and my friends played. So yeah, um, I think that's kind of Oregon Trail. <laughs> but, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? <laughs> where in the world? That's a good one. But no, but I think it's I. I still. I mean, like you know, just going off what what Wow was saying is, um, I'm kind of like one of those guys. I played. Well, I've played the entire series since it started. You mm-hmm. know, what I mean, so I played Call of Duty one and did, did that competitively as a pro as a esports player. And then, uh, <laughs> sports player and esports player. Yeah. Playing and then, esports uh, and Cal. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, it was Cal. I was Cal I in Call of Duty back then. Damn, the day. son. Yeah, man. I was a top sniper. But, it, but like, I, so I just kind of I just kind of followed the series through there. And then, um, my cousin, who's going to be my best man, ended up, he got an Xbox. And that's kind of how we play. And, um, mm-hmm. it, like you said, it's kind of like the, the every man's game. You know what I mean? Yep. So, yeah. I, I think it's yeah. a, but, I, but going back at, there are times where you're just like, what the, what the frick are they doing? You know what I mean? <laughs> Got to keep that Brandon vibe going. I'm trying, I'm trying to do that. <laughs> the best quote of the whole press conference was I Justine going, this looks so real. Like, it, that is, oh, it was so I perfect when she going. said it. It's so awful. Yep. I, yeah. I think after seeing the fish level or whatever it was, yeah. whenever fish, they were swimming, I, I think I saw someone like posted something too. Is like they're like, oh yeah, we made the the fish move when the guy swims, and so I was like, yeah, they did that Mario sixty four too. <laughs> you, <know that>. yeah. <laughs> but you don't see us tooting our horn about yeah. it. Yeah. So. Well, here's my whole thing, and with what Nick Nick Fenton was saying about this might be the year because you know new consoles are expensive. Also, um, with Titanfall coming. Um, although we haven't seen anything of it yet, we're going to see it at E3. And to me, that is a really highly anticipated game for me. Uh, yeah. Because obviously Respawn made COD 4, which is my favorite Call of Duty game. And now, Go ahead. Uh, Titan, Titanfall is supposed to come to PC too, yes. right? Like, Xbox yeah, okay. and yes. PC at the same time. Windows it, Windows exclusive. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so it will be on PC on, on release. Um so that game will be available to us. And if those guys can use, you know, the expertise that they had, say what you will about Modern Warfare 2, but it's a hell of a lot of fun, <laughs> even with all yeah. the bullshit. And I think, My favorite. I, yeah, and, and I loved Black Ops as well. But the fun factor, even the rage factor in Black Ops for me is like much worse than Modern Warfare 2. <laughs> Even though I love Black Ops, it's, it's hard to take Modern Warfare too seriously. Yeah, and and Modern Warfare is just another flat out fun game. So I'm hoping these guys can recapture some of that magic. And for me, that's that's definitely one of my most anticipated games. Um, I also am very interested in BF4, and apparently they're doing the BF4 reveal with just straight up multiplayer, um, which is a very cool way to do it. Uh, I'd rather see that because no one gives a shit about the battlefield campaign <laughs> they care. Yeah, it was weird that Ca- they people care even so less about the battlefield campaign than they do about the call of duty campaign and <laughs> like i don't remember yeah. the last time nah, I dude but up. don't 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 you want to see a building collapse while you're trying to jump into a helicopter i mean that just immerses you so much into what it's like to be a soldier dan <laughs> no laser dog don't care <laughs> <laughs> But um, every building must collapse, every single one. And of course, every dog must have lasers. <laughs> I do want to see more watchdogs footage, but that's kind of a given, and we've seen a lot of it at this point. So, um, there's some games listed on. I put a few links in the document just for some lists of games, like Cyberpunk 2077. I'm not excited at all to see that. I mean, I am, but the game's not going to be out for two years. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't really care. I don't. I don't have any game that I'm looking for. Well, except for Wildstar, if they show anything, like John said, but. Mm-hmm. I don't. I, all I care about is just seeing what uh, Sony and Microsoft are going to do at their press conferences. Yep. And Sony is in such good water right now. If they, they are. if they would just 
do it right at this at this thing, they could totally win this over. Like the fact that they're bringing free to play titles to PS4 is such a big selling point. Yeah. And, and I'm looking at a list right now of the games that they've announced um, already, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six free to play games. That's pretty uh, th fantastic. And, yeah. and one of them's uh, exclusive. Yeah. Like, like that's it's such a good buy-in to go. And, and you probably I don't know if you'll have to have PS Plus to play a free-to-play game I doubt it and that and that's the great thing is that you don't have to pay for an online service yeah like you have to do with Microsoft that is that has always been my biggest gripe since I got an Xbox was like so you're telling me I have to pay for my internet service then I have to also pay for your for your service and then I yep. also pay for Netflix like <laughs> on top of all that so I'm paying like you know an extra a gazillion. Potentially, yeah. And if I'm sub to an MMO, like, wow, <laughs> on top of that, my gaming monthly, it's like, like you know, 40, 50 bucks a month just to do that. So yeah. um, I always thought it would be, they haven't announced anything with the new Xbox Live, what they're going to do. They would, as far as like paying for it, Price they, points, would be, yeah. they would be, a lot of people think what they're going to do with Xbox One is it's going to be a $200 console. But then you have to go let, just like you would with, uh, with like a cell phone. So you pay like two hundred bucks for the console, and then you're going to pay a monthly contract. monthly yep. subsidy, and you're going to be on a contract. And mm -hmm. um, that's how a lot of people think they're going to do it to try because if so, then if Sony comes out with a five hundred dollar mm -hmm. PS4, yeah, just yeah. like up. what are you going to do if you don't have that much money? Um, <laughs> And, and people and, and gaming journalists can break down the numbers all they want to. The mass majority of the market is not paying attention to anything that is happening. Right. I mean, the the Xbox One is still going to sell. Yeah. It, oh yeah. I don't I I don't know if it'll beat the PS4. That's still up in the air, but it's still going to sell because people just they don't care uh, about yeah. anything related to that. Like, just look at how politics in America works, yes. and then you could just use that as a reference as to how people are going to treat buying a gaming console. It's yep. just going to be a free-for-all, really. So, true. You mad because I'm going to buy one. You're going to buy You're going to buy them both. <laughs> You're gonna buy yeah, I'm going to buy all of them. I'm an adult now, kind of. The, the <laughs> only thing that appeals me uh, about Xbox is the fact that I have so much invested in DLC in terms of Rock Band that if Rock Band comes back to the Xbox and somehow ports over their DLC to the Xbox One, I, it, that would almost make me buy one because I have so much money yeah. invested into DLC on that console that I will lose and because they're only going to support the Xbox yeah. 360 for what? They yeah. said five years afterwards, yeah. and then yep. it's gone. 2017, like, I believe, or something People, like uh, th there's been the whole conversation about used games potentially uh, faltering because of all of this. But what about the downloadable content that you've bought and also the downloadable games that you've bought? That's that. It's already here. That's, We've already had this system around where you don't have any trade-in value, and you can potentially lose things that you only own a license to that is run by a server. We've already yeah. have that. Like, yeah, I have thousands of dollars in DLC on the Xbox that I can lose in five years. Yep. Yeah, and that it's interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how they handle this for the first time. This is the first generation where we're making a leap from yeah. a DLC console, because that wasn't a thing on PlayStation 2, Xbox One, GameCube. Mm -hmm. And everything's like, got to be ported, because it's a different yeah. architecture. And, and they've said they're not going to do that for the Xbox 360 to the Xbox One. They said that... Your your downloadable titles, they, you're gonna want to hold on to your. They're actually they're actually putting out a massive update for live for the 360 um, soon that they're gonna go into detail at, at E3. Um, so I mean, at least they are supporting it. What sounds like fully for those five years, they're not just gonna be like, "Yeah, hey, we'll leave the servers on." Like, yeah. But but it is that is a big concern, and even as uh, guys on PC and having Steam. What if Valve all of a sudden died? <laughs> like, yeah, Steam what too. happens? Yeah, what happens to the thousands of dollars that I've spent on Steam? Yeah. Do I just not access that uh, anymore? I'll tell you what happened for what would happen to me. Uh, absolutely nothing, because I don't play any of those games anyway. So. <laughs> you don't play hey, any games yeah. through Steam at all? None. Nope. <laughs> I don't even. I don't have anything installed. Origin. <laughs> it's all about that all work. But I um, mean, it's it's a. It's a thing that has been talked about as to what happens now that everything will be digital. Because uh, also on Xbox One, even, they say they want those consoles to last 10 years. 
well, what happens after 10 years? Because everything's going to be digital sales on that console. Um, because every game that you can buy in your, in the store, they're going to have available for digital download on the same day. Yeah. They've already announced that. So yeah, it's interesting to think about that when everything is running on the cloud and not <laughs> you don't the actually you don't actually own anything like the infinite power oh. of the cloud. So I don't care. I'll buy your game twice on different platforms because digital download is just so easy. Yeah, I, that's, that's I mean, true. I'm, yeah. I'm not a good consumer, but I'll do it. I do thought, like, they, oh, go ahead, Eric. I was thinking, like, do you think they tested it out? I mean, do you remember a long time ago? I think when I, it might have been a Halo game or Call of Duty game when they said you can download it straight to your Xbox and not use the CD anymore. Mm -hmm. um, like, they were testing it out to see how many times people would do that, and how, and maybe use that as like a like a base tester to see what they would do with the next console, saying like, oh, we're gonna go more mm -hmm. down. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. maybe in their eyes, it was like, well, it's worth it. It's less money for us to, to purchase um, a supplier to supply those games out and everything like that. We can kind of do yeah. it in-house and make that. I mean, that's that clearly one. the better way to do it is digital, yeah. but especially but, for game you know, media. I'm getting yeah. The Last of Us uh, digital downloads. Like, that's coming out this week. So, I mean, I thought it was I'll, already I'll out. No, was, I guess it's just out for yeah, it review. It comes out on Friday. Probably the best yeah. review game of the yeah, year. Yeah, I don't, I don't it care. Makes, I'll, it makes I'll sense. I really download my console games, too. I'm not really attached to the physical Oh, no, disc. yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah. And that makes so much more sense for these companies to do that because you're eliminating so much cost mm -hmm. if you're yeah. just distributing digitally. And you don't even necessarily have to limit that cost. You can take the, the budget that you had from your funding and move that towards marketing instead of actual costs mm -hmm. for discs, you know, manufacturing Manuals. all of that shit. <laughs> you move you move that you move that budget towards marketing, you sell significantly more copies. A company a company like the, you know, like Telltale or something, yeah. you know, a smaller a company that was smaller. Yep. They had no budget. No budget at all for their game. They couldn't market the game, they couldn't do anything. If you take if you take that physical that manufacturing budget and move that to marketing, they probably sell Ten times as many copies yeah. as they did of The Walking and Dead, which is already extremely successful. I bet, uh, like with BLR coming to the PS4, I bet you there will not be a physical BLR disc. I mean, it's obviously no, going no. to be a download yeah. the, through the through whatever the PlayStation. I would imagine all free to play games are just going to be download. Like, they I don't, should I don't, be. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you would do that on disc. Yeah, and it's I don't know. It's interesting. We'll have to see. These press conferences will be obviously huge. Uh, Microsoft Sweet. focusing on more of the games. We're actually going to see a PS4 finally. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear about that. I didn't know they were showing I actually, off. So. Actually, well, the games will be playable, that. so mm -hmm. they'll have to have <laughs> something there. Yeah. <laughs> you Go think ahead. of the consequences, like the the good consequences of all of these things going digital and like more marketing for games and stuff might kind of legitimize a little bit more too. Yeah. Like if it's something that is always around and you're not just seeing like a banner on a train every once in a while, like if it's always on TV, it's always everywhere you go. If like that's, a, that's advertising that people see regularly, mm -hmm. it could potentially legitimize the industry even though this industry makes more money than any other one. Like, <laughs> I mean, what was World of Warcraft sales when they went up and started advertising like with mainstream? I don't know. I mean, like at, their, at, their peak, at their peak, they were at 13 million subscribers. So I would venture to say they probably sold, what, 30 million, 40 million copies of the game, Dan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So. yeah, easily. And they were playing like during like football game commercials and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Blizzard yeah. Blizzard Activision yeah. is just like made of cash. Well, they they market. Yeah. Yeah. Like like Blizzard, I mean they they marketed Diablo, you know, they have the budget to do that. It's these smaller it's smaller studios that have to make that decision, you know, do we market mm -hmm. or what do we what do we spend our budget on? If they don't have to spend that millions of dollars on manufacturing things, they can market their games too. Yeah. And what if and they that's, put that That's the biggest seller. And, they, mm -hmm. and like if Xbox does that, they could put that money maybe back into the system where there isn't as high fees. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like Hopefully. stuff like that. There's, so they they could they they could be like a that. You know what I mean that they yeah, they could. Yeah. You don't need your microtransactions they, in the game. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, they could be. A It'll lot be interesting to see how it yeah. plays out. Yeah. Exactly. Holy It'll shit! Help, someone else. help the console a lot. Someone on my friends list just started playing Special Forces Team X, guys. Do you remember that game? <laughs> oh my god! Does anyone even remember? Um, no, <laughs> uh, I have no idea what that is. So here's... I'm looking forward to the new Thief. The, are you really? I, I, I say that. I like I was, Thief. I was curious about it too. Mm. Yeah, it's. 
I, I want to. I'm, I'm very I'm interested skeptical. to see what they're gonna what they're gonna come out with. If it looks good, I'm gonna be excited because Thief Deadly Shadows was so close to being good, and then just like halfway through, it's like, hey, monsters. Oh, good. Yeah. So is it like a like a like a first person Assassin's yes. Creed kind of thing? Yeah, it's a first person. Yeah. The game it's, is the first, per- first person. You're a thief. It's not so much based on like killing people. You can you usually want to like knock out a guard rather than kill him because right. it that usually has pretty serious consequences and it actually makes your job harder. But you literally like you. It's a first person stealth game and you break into people's houses and usually you have like a, a really valuable item you're trying to steal and then you know eventually they they end up introducing a more a more serious plot. But at the beginning of the game, like you're literally just like going through people's houses and just looting them of all valuables. It's really fun. Yeah. So. Here's anyone else got anticipated games before I just go down a little list of Nothing stuff matters because Call of Duty game of the year, of course. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> well, it's um, going to be a very emotional game because of the dog. So. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. obviously. It's, it. it's old yeller with guns. That's exactly what it will yeah. be. Yeah, wait a minute. Fable 3, dude. <laughs> Fable 4. Fable 4. Possibly. Yeah. Possibility. Yeah, no, thanks. That's also I've, been thrown out as a possibility. I've never played it. Al- also, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 4 has been thrown out there as a rumored game. New um, Smash Brothers. I would love a new Marvel vs. Capcom. New Smash Brothers yeah. is good. That's, if, that's that com- if, that comes out on, if that comes out on 3DS, I'm going to just buy a 3DS. Oh, hell yes. Oh, my God. Cause wasn't that the rumor that it's going to be... Cr- or, well, no, that was something they said they were going to do. It was going to be cross-compatible with Wii U and uh, well, yeah, 3DS. Yeah, they're, they're, they're pushing that a lot. They did the same thing with Monster Hunter 3. And if it's that's a thing... Amazing. If that's a thing and I can just carry around Super Smash Brothers, I'm going to buy a 3DS. Oh, my God, yeah. Especially if it just has, like, you know, wireless play. That would be... Like, if they did it like um, Mario Kart did on the first DS, where only one person needed the cartridge and anybody with the DS could join in. Oh, that shit was amazing for, like, exactly. Metroid. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah Metroid, too. Uh, uh, Bounty Hunters, whatever it was called. Yeah. Yeah. So, here's some other games that we will may may or may not see. Some of these actually are confirmed, but um, there's going to be that Quantum Break game we'll see more of. That's the new game from the dudes who made Alan Wake. Um, and has like a TV series that maybe appears coming with it. Like I, I don't even know. And fucking That's... Xbox shit. Um, <laughs> but uh, Witcher Three will be playable. Um, that game looks the scale of that game. For people that don't know or didn't play the first two Witchers, the Witcher Three is going to be it's something like three or four times as big as the world in Skyrim was. So what's great is I is I game. turn up the Witcher Two still. I turn that game up, 2680s, 3930K, 16 gigs of RAM, still get 40 FPS, get yep. destroyed. <laughs> yep, uber sampling eats you alive. <laughs> it, it destroys you. Uh, uh, there's a guy who did a benchmark video I found it on YouTube. He had uh, quad SLI 780s, and was that was the first build that's ever existed that was able to break 60 FPS like regularly <laughs> with, with super sampling on. He was, getting, like, six, he was like, getting 60 to 65 outside and like in a tunnel. Like, yeah. literally just a tunnel. He was getting, like, 90. All right, so here's some more rumors. Nice. Here's some more rumors from NeoGAF. Of course, always, you know, always accurate. Um, <laughs> but uh, Mirror's Edge 2, of course. Uh, League of Legends coming to Xbox One. That's a rumor. Um, oh. That'd be zany. Black, Black uh, Dragon Age no? has something coming up. Yeah, Dragon Maybe. Age 3. Uh Inquisition, I think, is the name of it. That's that's a big rumored one. That one, I think, is actually coming because that's on PC Gamer and Max PC here. Yeah, they so. uh, somebody from Bioware actually tweeted uh, something about Dragon Age coming uh, at the EA conference. So it's yeah. got to be Dragon Age three. What else could it be? <laughs> as long as it's good, because Dragon Age two was shit ass dick. Uh, Final Fantasy fifteen uh, rumored to be shown. Uh, Final Fantasy thirteen HD for PC. Yep. To come. I do want that actually. Uh, we already know I'll Planet Side play Planet Side Two on PS4, BLR on PS4. Um, all Pokemon X Y introducing a new type, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Fairy type. Mario Kart Wii U. I'm totally down. Kingdom Hearts two and a half or three. Some sort of Kingdom Hearts thing is rumored. I know lots of people love that series. Probably um, 3. They've they've been saying that they're finally going to start working on 3. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? Of course Arkham Origins, although no one knows if that'll be playable there or just shown. Uh, Ooh, I will say that's this. Playable. The Arkham Origins trailer obviously wasn't gameplay but that was some of the most insane CGI I've ever seen. Right up yeah, there. Yeah, the, that, that cinematic was pretty good. I'll yeah, admit. it was pretty insane. Uh, 
BF4, multiplayer would be playable. Um, <clears throat> the Double I mean, Fine I'm Adventure. About that. I, I, I'm very interested in BF4 this time around. Um, what else we got? Project Eternity, rumored to be shown there. For those who don't know about that, I'm very, very excited for that game. It is kind of a dream team of 90s RPG dudes making a game and they were a huge kickstarter i think they topped like six million or something like that um or to be there i really really want that game uh call of duty ghosts obviously some arma 3 daisy standalone rumored to be there that goes into actual alpha soon that'd be cool for people i'm excited for that uh watchdogs playable uh d3 you guys better play that and report back <laughs> uh <laughs> Rome 2, supposed to be some massive RTS, is on PC Gamer's list. Um, yeah, you no. know, that's the sequel to that other Rome game. Rome, yeah. Rome the first. I don't know. <laughs> I don't play RTS games. I apologize. Toad um, Tower? <laughs> Total. I think it's Rome to Tower. <laughs> Total War? Towels? To to tower. Um yeah. <laughs> Elder Scrolls Total Online will be there, which John and Brandon both said was amazing at PAX East. Um, that that trailer, I was not interested at all until I saw the trailer at PAX East. That trailer is ridiculous. It's really uh, fucking cool. Wild Star, Star, which I played at PAX East and was very fun. And they've announced lots of cool stuff. Uh there's for those that don't know about Wild Star, the player housing shit in that game is amazing. You can have <laughs> I was... Yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in it just for, like, the Animal Crossing aspect there, yeah, the, like, sim aspect. you can make aspect. your house and, like, put trophies in it, but you can also have, like, uh, you don't have to go into town to do, like, profession shit. You can, like, put, like, if you're a blacksmith, you can put a forge on your house. Um, you can also Fuck put, it, like, I'm sold. You can put, like, shopkeepers by your house and stuff, so that just becomes the... There's raid portals oh. at your house, so you can just port right to the raids um, without having to to do any of that, uh, that travel, which I like. Can I marry Nick Fenton's avatar and have him move into my house with me? <laughs> I no. can't confirm that, but I it's would like, like... If that would happen, that would be amazing. Um, it's like The Sims. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and of I'm course, saying. Titanfall will be there, and the the rumor from everything they've been saying is it will be playable, um, even though no one has seen it at all yet. So... That, again, as I said during early, the earlier segment, is probably my most anticipated thing there. So, all right. So that is E3, folks. We'll see what happens. There will be something crazy that no one sees coming. There usually is for some sort of game or new IP. New IPs are always exciting as well. Um, I got a question for you guys. Do you, uh, are you, you sent out that list of games. I was looking at Wolfenstein. Yes. Um, Fuck it. Mm. Fuck that shit. People no are multiplayer so mad. I don't, dick. I don't care. I love the single player Wolfenstein game. So if the I'm, single player is good, it's not going to matter. Yeah, it it it's going to be like a twenty. I really game, like their trailer. So. Um, Rise of the Triad single player will be playable there as well. So all these new games, new old games coming out. Rise <laughs> of the Triad's freaking amazing though. Uh, but. Moving on to some quick new stuff, and these will be quick because we need to move on. But I'm just going to run down. You guys can comment if you want. WoW is introducing a new type of raid that falls somewhere in between the regular raiding and uh, looking for raid. And it's called Social Raids, and it's aimed to be like at like a group of friends who want to do a raid. I think it's 10 to 25, man. So you can ha I think you can have numbers in between. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. know how they're going to do really it, but that's cool. going to be... Yeah, it is a very cool idea. I'm not sure how they like, their system just scales. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know how dumbed the down it's going to be or anything like that. But um, what it should be is harder than looking for raid, but not as hard <laughs> as as like uh, the Carla. actual. Yeah. So it so it be. just scales depending on how many people are in actually in your yeah, party. You can yeah. you can do, you can do a raid minimum. with thirteen yeah. people. Like, yeah, that's that's the fucking coolest thing. <laughs> that is the coolest thing. I, I said I said when it, when I did the tweet on the KB mod account, I was like KB mod raid nights. <laughs> like yeah, we just get. I like, mean just just the fact that they're still doing shit like this for WoW makes me really excited for Titan. Like yeah. it, it really really makes me want that shit to come out sooner. Yep. Because they're still doing things like this for World of Warcraft. Yep, they they take care of their games generally. Uh, 
the WoW movie this is the second WoW thing. The WoW movie oh. begins shooting in 2014. That is going to be horrible, but this I will was, still go see it probably. <laughs> I was thinking about when I when I saw this, I was thinking of who the actress would be. Yeah, I was They've... thinking you got to bring Arnold back. I think if <laughs> Arnold, the right Arnold thrall. plays Thrall, the right <laughs> thing yes. to do. Uh, the right thing to do would just have no actors and have it be the CGI that they like all the their yeah. cinematics stuff. are amazing. They're, yeah, all the cinematics <laughs> on all Blizzard games, not all, but like it's Sam 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 all of them, they're just amazing. We have to unite the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, is Sam Raimi still directing? Or no, is he, he left. Of that? He left. Oh, okay. Are you um, taunting him? <laughs> see now if. <laughs> See what I wanted was a World of Warcraft and Evil Dead mashup. So oh god, I'm out uh, now. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> I wanted Bruce Campbell as Thrall. Legendary mm-hmm. Films is like producing, and then Duncan Jones is directing. And Duncan he, Jones. He did Duncan, Duncan Rocks. He did. <laughs> he did Source Code. Never heard of that movie. Um, he sounds like a black exploitation star. And a movie, never heard that movie called, in my life. a movie called Moon. I have no idea. I've never Moon? Seen one. Moon is great. I've never oh heard of it. My Sorry. God. Is it great? Oh. I don't know. Yes, it's a very good movie. Okay. Well, there you go. Nick Fenton, on on board with the World of Warcraft character. <laughs> um, so I was reading. I was reading comments of like what people were saying about it, and like someone tried to was like that movie's going to suck. Like who would want to go to it? And he's like. One of the persons was like, uh, it's not just World of Warcraft. It's like a world of Warcrafts because it's just been more than just – like he tried to justify it. And I was just like look, like thinking to myself, like this guy is a total dumbass. I don't know what he's talking about. And he's trying <laughs> to jump on board to something that's not going to be cool. So he's, like trying, he's trying to jump on that train and everyone's going to hate it. I'm, so. I'm probably going to see it. Oh, I'm definitely going to see it. I put, I'll see it, but I just don't know. I put we thousands should, we should of try hours to get everybody too much in, Yeah, too invested into World of Warcraft yeah, to, to not, not see the movie. See it. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should try to get everybody to Pittsburgh and, uh, Pittsburgh and do a movie <laughs> night. Do a movie night. <laughs> uh, do it in the home off season. I'm flying in. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on here, we got Dark Souls 2 has a release date. It's in March 2014. Um, I still need to play Dark Souls one and beat myself I bought up. It, and and yeah, I ha- I still haven't. Uh, it is it all. unabashedly brutal. So yeah. <laughs> um, Ducktales remastered confirmed for PC. I'm actually super excited about that. <laughs> uh, that the the playable game they had at PAX East was awesome. At that point, it was only on consoles, but uh, they actually got the original voice actor dudes to do it. Jeez. One of them was like 94. Like one of them. And and they <laughs> had him in the middle of recording his what? lines. He might have. <laughs> what kind of what kind of like game Dumbledore. is DuckTales? Cuz I never played it. It's a, it's like a platform. It's, it's a, an NES it's, platform. Yeah, it was an NES platformer oh, okay. and it was amazing though. It was like it's one it, of the most revered yeah. uh games from that. It um it had the uh the like pogo jump like the down the downward spike attack kind of like Zelda 2 kind of style that Shovel Knight is based around. Shovel Knight's based around like the yeah. downward thrust from Ducktales and Zelda Two. Yeah, you uh, you bounce on your cane. On yeah, your yeah, the cane the cane bounces is, is a yeah. really big thing. Uh, it's it's not supposed to be like old NES difficult. It's it's like less difficult than the old Mega Man games. Yeah. I've actually never played it. Um, it's I'm so thinking, good, dude. I'm thinking about <laughs> trying it out and then playing it on the on the emulator stream. It's once. so good. So, someone suggested a Duck Hunt FPS thriller. I, I could get. Behind, <laughs> I could get I could get behind that game. Uh, it's called Big Game Hunter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just go get Cabela's Big Game Hunter. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, like Slender, but it's like, I don't know, dander. <laughs> well, next, we got, and I, I got super pumped when I saw this, even though we don't know what the heck it is. Uh, Walking Dead DLC appeared in the Steam app database, and also they've been putting out these weird vines um, for like a couple weeks now, Telltale. This 400 Days DLC, I don't, like, nobody knows exactly what it is. They were supposed to put some Walking Dead stuff out, between season one and season two so i am very excited and i hope i hope it's something even if it's like a couple hours i hope i hope they throw something out there that'd be great um and finally we got spelunky hd coming back to the pc that game came out on pc for free originally and uh it's it did very very well on xbox live arcade the hd edition and now it's coming out for pc later this summer so look for that. It'll probably be like five or ten bucks or something. Won't be expensive. You can get the original free version as well. 
for free. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> on their site. I don't even know what the, the link to their site is, but you can download it. Um, and as far as new releases this week, and this one was weird because every site is reporting this is out Tuesday, but Steam says it's out the 28th. So I don't even know. Dark, which is like a stealth action vampire based game, um, comes out this Tuesday, supposedly, except according to Steam. Yeah, <laughs> according to Steam, this game will unlock in two weeks and four days. Yeah, Fuck and <laughs> more importantly, The Last of Us comes out on Friday. So. Yes. They did the smart thing with The Last of Us. Not that it wasn't hyped enough, but just get out of E3. Don't release yeah. on Tuesday. Release on Friday. Um, that was a smart thing for them to do. So, oh my god, who put this picture of the snake in the dock? I just saw that. That's what I was laughing about. <laughs> I did. My god bad. damn. And there's a Nick Fenton picture Sorry. down below. All right, we're going to take a couple minute commercial break, and then we'll be that back amazing. with your Twitter questions. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, despite like the hype behind The Last of Us, I keep hearing a lot of negative things about it. it especially the AI is what. It's got I like, don't it's give a PS3. shit. Naughty Dog is. I'm amazing. trying to get a PS3. <laughs> I have one. This would be a good reason to actually turn it on for the first time in months. Um, you should get Journey too, Blacklight, if you didn't play it. Oh my god, Journey uh, is so good. I've been to play it. I'm, really I'm also going to start like, using it. It's pretty short, is isn't it? So good. Yeah, you can do it in two yep. hours. Yeah, I'm also gonna start using it because it's official. My uh, my subs voted in Final Fantasy VII as my next Let's Play. Good lord, God, it's gonna be a long one. That's yeah, gonna be a people long love one. old games. I did 16 hours of that on live streams and like got to like fucking out, yeah, like out of too. Midgar. <laughs> got like out of <laughs> Midgar. Out of Midgar yeah. 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 I got to calm or whatever the first town was, and then and then oh, we're gonna be here like four years down the road, and Blacklight is still doing a Final Fantasy yeah. VII let's God. play. Everybody will have stopped like YouTube completely. Everybody's got real jobs now. Yeah, like, everybody's out of the game. It's just I'm actually Blacklight. able to grow respectable facial hair, and I have <laughs> wife and kids, and I'm like on disc two. <laughs> I've I've been doing that WoW thing. It's thirteen thirteenth episode of that will be tomorrow. So, I mean, I'm only level 51. Although, Angoro Crater is making me want to kill myself currently. And that's where I'm at. But I, if they change is, that, is that avoidable? What's the other zone that you could do with that level? Winter I Spring, I... Winter Spring uh, which is yeah, literally, yeah, literally unchanged. Nothing yeah, changed in Cataclysm. That sucks. It's exactly the same Winter zone. Spring is fucking awful. It is they terrible. were both on that... That level, that what was, that's like that's like early fifties. It's like fifty two to fifty five or something like yeah. that. Fifty to fifty five. Both zones are that yeah. now. If that, Blizzard's uh, idea was to capture how fucking shitty a frozen land is, then Winter Spring <laughs> is that <laughs> shitty everybody, frozen land. Everybody hates the snow level. John, Everywhere, every game, the snow level always sucks. John knows this. I didn't mind Winter Spring. We used to grind ghosts on the lake there. we back in classic before anything was I, revamped. To get shat, to get uh, eye of the shadows. And I fucking. Grind Grind the timber mob rep there. Like, oh, fuck, I've been I there a long too. time. Yeah, we used to grind those ghosts uh, though to do like fifty nine to sixty because it was faster yeah. than leveling back then. Fuck that so game. Like, oh my god, it was terrible. <laughs> but uh, oh, Lord. all right. So Twitter time. Got some got some zany ones tonight. Okay, no, not really. Oh, boy. But uh, at Ronnie No Blink asks. If you had to have a forced telepathic link with a KB mod member, who would you choose? Uh, if I chose Nick Fenn, I would always be on the cutting edge of memes, like, all the time. <laughs> I would always know what the most recent joke is, and I would be able to exploit it before it stops being cool like I do now. <laughs> Wow, I wouldn't I... want to be linked with Alex so I could actually know what he's up to because I yeah, haven't heard from him in forever. I agree so with that, Alex. Yeah. What a dick. <laughs> yeah. I just want to know that Alex is okay. I might choose Scott. I so texted I could... him. He's still alive. So I can be on that trap shit all the time. Yeah. Um, I think that's a good option. I'm always at the club then in part of my mind. So... Experience yeah. the trap without having to go to the trap. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I wouldn't choose Brandon... Because that would, that would, let's just be honest, that would be terrible. Um, <laughs> your life would just be a series of meth methodical actions. And, and, <laughs> and yet, you would get to have so much mirror, you know, hanky pank. Yeah, you would. Exactly. You'd get to mirror have that weird punk. mirror sex and, like, totally yeah. experience it how it should be experienced. Mirror fucking. <laughs> um, I think, I think, 
I don't know. I think I would go Scott. Having the trap shit with me all the time would just be unbelievable. I wouldn't pick Black Lake because he's got ants in his house. Fuck that. <laughs> Not more. Fuck those dudes up. <laughs> if you if you had a telepathic link with me right now, you would be able to experience the thrill of victory. Uh, what did after. you do? Like spray them with water or something? I sprayed them with white vinegar. It fucking melts that shit. They hate it. They die in agony, and it feels great. I ended I ended the lives of like fifty lesser life forms yesterday. Damn, son. God. Actually, that reminds me. Whenever I used to Seems. cut grass a lot. I would actually fucking go for anthill specifically and yeah. and feel like I was causing a twister inside of an anthill and just wonder what kind of fucking destruction was going on below. <laughs> yeah. And that families were being torn apart <laughs> by by me and a lawnmower blade. And there's no sympathy because they're fucking ants. Ants are the goddamn worst. Do you guys get fire ants where you live? Nah. Like, oh, no, thank God. Those motherfucker, I got bit uh, by one of those motherfuckers. Only one. I caught it on my ankle. Oof. And it burned. It, it literally burned my my leg. I got so pissed. It's like yeah. this motherfucker, and then it swells up. It's like a then it burn. It like burns. It's like someone stuck a, a a put out match right on your skin. <laughs> yeah, that's fuck that. Wild yeah, creature. Black. Fuck them. Uh, fuck just, cockroaches. They're just shitty little Mark, black ants that don't stand a chance against my excellent combat skills. Mark probably has dealt with large cockroaches, being from the Carolinas. Oh, yeah, yeah. From where I, for, where oh, I live, if Lord, you don't dude. see a cockroach in your house at night, then I don't know how. You you have to, like, have the best pest control. You have to build, a, a, like, a hundred-foot wall with laser beams to kill cockroaches to not get them in your house. <laughs> with the, with the sticky traps just on the yeah. side. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> We, we stayed in, a, I've told part of this story before, but I, I went on like mission trips to South Carolina with my church in high school, and we stayed at a high, at a high school there, and um, you know, it wasn't being used during the summer, obviously, but that thing was infested, infested, dude, like, we used the, uh, the locker room showers to shower, and it was just like, oh, I just, I can't, I'm having like flashbacks so bad, because <laughs> they were the biggest fucking cockroaches too, because it was like a public space, it was yeah. even like a home, so they were just like, oh my god, the worst. Maybe they were not... looking at you, yeah. maybe they were looking at you like, what the fuck are you doing in my well, house? You bro? would take, you would take a piss and they would run through your urine stream in the urinal, <laughs> and then like out the other side, dude, like it was shower. just like, oh. You were, you god. were there using that bathroom because they allowed you to. Yeah. They ran that joint. That's true. All right, next question. Because KD Zen, the dude who gives us the craziest questions, is all complaining that we're off topic. Whatever, dude. All right. <laughs> At Chris Liu from 702 asks, does anybody else think John looks like Ethan Hawk, or am I smoking too much perp? John does look like Ethan Hawk. Boom. Yeah, right there. Like Ethan Hawk. It's an easy question to answer. Uh, yeah, I, yeah kind of. John does look like Ethan Hawk. I had to look up some pictures because I don't remember what people look like, but. I'm saying uh, no. Well, he doesn't look like no. Ethan Hawke no. now. He no, like... not really. Yeah. Yeah, hold on. Let me find he, a good, like, like, Ethan Hawke has to have the goatee, and even then it's a stretch. Oh, there's... Hold on. There's one picture of Ethan Hawke that... That, uh... Yeah, I'm looking at it. Suggests that it is. Hold yeah. on. It's that one. This uh, one kind of yeah. looks like Johnson Is it this one? Is it this one? I need to view this original image. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I wasn't uh, even looking at that one. <laughs> Spot on. Yep, so Nuketown got it in chat for me. Platinum blonde, Ethan Hawke. <laughs> Definitely. That dude took some drugs before that. <laughs> uh, I think we just DDoS that one link because it's not coming Good. up anymore. Um, oh, wait. <laughs> this one's definitely Lord. going in chat. I love this you in training day, John. <laughs> Fuck you all. <laughs> John's so mad right now. Ethan Hawke's a good-looking dude. Why should I look like Ethan Hawke? <laughs> Why do you have to be mid? <laughs> All right. Dan, He's a good-looking guy. Moving on. Dan B. asks, and he emailed in, what has been the oddest thing that you've ever received as a gift? An emailed Twitter question. <laughs> I hope that wasn't a gift. <laughs> I, I consider every Twitter question a gift, Dan. I don't know oh, do you? I'm sorry. <laughs> Fucking angry. Weirdest gift I've ever received. I don't know. I know. A, plac a placenta for me. J what? What? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Mine is right here. I just wanted oh, to joke. Nick Fenton's moose thing. Oh, no. What this? is that? It's a stuffed animal. Okay. But it was signed by, okay, I'm 
still have no idea how to say his last name. Author of Fight Club, Chuck. Chuck Palahniuk. Pal- 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 it's signed Pal- by him. Wait, did you awesome. did you mail him? And like, no, my, for... my sister went to a book signing. Because because at what he does nice. is if you go to a book signing, at least he used to do this. When he came to Pitt, I had him sign my copy of Fight Club, and if you mail him, he will mail you back a, 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 an actual box of stuff signed by him. Just like random shit like that puppy. Like he That's will awesome. he will Yeah, I don't even know like, why it's on a stuffed animal. I'd never even ask my sister. She just like he, gave it to me. And he I was sent like, my okay. buddy my buddy a, like a box of stuff. And it was a just good, a good Go ahead. Yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. A good way to remember his name, Nick, how it's pronounced is the the name Paula and then the name Nick, just Paula Nick. Yeah. It's Shut up. Don't <laughs> don't get flustered by all that fucking consonants just thrown in there. It doesn't make any sense. My uh, my mother-in-law still thinks we're all 12. So even though we're 30 and married and have children, we still get gifts that you would get if you were like a, like 8 to 10, like matching pajamas. <laughs> shit. Did your like, mom give you good stocking stuffers? Oh my a god. Box no, no, of hard worst. candies. She gave me a stand <laughs> to prop my phone up to watch stuff on it, which like she has never seen me do, nor do I ever do. But like it's just stuff like that. You'll mention something real small, like, hey, I wish I had this thing. And she'll get yeah. it, but in reality, you didn't want that thing at all. You were just like she so scowls around to find that fucking thing. Yeah, I know. And, and then you get it, and you're like, I, this is uh, seriously just going in the back of the closet never being my, seen. My parents got me a Halo compendium. I, I'm like, I haven't played Halo since, like, <laughs> the first Xbox. It, I, think it, I think it's still unopened. I've got a good one. Um, uh, not too long ago, my family started doing a gift exchange uh, because mm-hmm. we have oh, at God, least, no. like, between 10 to 15 people, so we just didn't spend that much money to try yeah. to get everybody a gift. So everybody right. would get a gift that was, like, 20 to 30 bucks, and then you would do the exchange thing. And I oh, got a God. hot dog bun toaster. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> that's, I, that's, that's probably the best one and the weirdest one that I've gotten is if a hot actually, dog bun toaster. Yeah, if you actually eat hot dogs a lot, that would be pretty <laughs> I don't. I never eat I hot tried dogs. to use it one time, and it was kind of weird to figure out how to get it to toast right. It wasn't that great. I actually, I, <laughs> I also don't get received one. Gifts. Well, I don't from my family. I always get, like, real legit stuff, but my mother-in-law, man. <laughs> oh, oh, my aunt. My aunt one time got me and each of my siblings a stack, like, this fucking thick of coupons for car washes, <laughs> which, is like, which is kind of, kind of thoughtful, you know, I mean, like, I could definitely stand to wash my car more, and it is kind of, like, unduly expensive for something that doesn't really need to be done, but it was for a car wash chain that only is in the city, and she knows that we all live in the suburbs, and... Getting into Philly like, is it's not like a, that easy, and not a like fun the, experience. It's not that difficult either, but, like, I'm not gonna drive 45 minutes to get my car washed, even if it is free. I'm probably spending the same amount on gas, like... Yeah. <laughs> It was just a really like weird like what what are you thinking? Kinda? That's the kind of stuff though. That's the kind of stuff I get every birthday from my mother-in-law. It's yeah, like, heard you talking about this once. <laughs> here's <laughs> here's this item that you will never. I heard use. you just mention this in random conversation. You didn't say that you actually had any interest in yeah, it, we, but I just figured I would get it for you. We, yeah, we have like a fire bowl that we like take out sometimes in the summer just sit around like maybe do s'mores on it like you know it's like a little backyard like fireball thing it's not like a fire pit or a grill at all so we did that once one time right and i also received a hot dog bun thing but for over (laughs) a fire like it it is in my basement right now it has never been used i have i have one of those i have one that you put and you cook over the fire but that's fucking legit that's like for summer camp but i don't have a fire like ever that's the whole problem. But you could if you I wanted could. to have a fire. I could if Just I wanted to set fire in your up. house. Don't like, you do that. And then film bit. some porno <laughs> yeah. during the as fire. Soon, as soon as the as soon as the walls start catching fire, that's when you're like, boom, porno time. <laughs> All right. I have for so for gifts for me, I have the leg lamp from Christmas oh, story. See, but that's oh, sweet. I want that. What? I've always wanted that wow. stupid lamp. Yeah, <laughs> I got that at a white elephant. And here's the best one. I went to my buddy's work, White Elephant Party, like all of his co-workers, and I was like, I'm just going to go and just get drunk and, and whatever. This is when I was in Columbus. And I, I needed a gift. And I, I it's weirdly, I can crochet. So, like, I, I stuck a, a, some yarn and a crochet hook and a, a note that said free two free lessons. 
and then uh, put in a, an Apple bag, right? And everyone's going through, and there's like, I get my gift, and no one's stealing my gift because they don't know who the drunk fucker is, is in the sitting in the corner just like sipping the whiskey. So by the time it comes, people open up their gifts. I open up mine. I got two saucer sleds because it's snowing, a bottle of Bailey's, and Swiss Miss, which is like you just you cleaned up, <laughs> right. right? And the the girl that got my bag opened it up and like had a fit. It was like. What is this? And my buddy Pat was like cracking up. I said, "Yeah, who's the dumbass who brought that gift?" She's like, "What does it say?" It says, "It's a y- it's yarn in a needle, and it says two free lessons." Like, what the fuck do I do with it? Right? And so basically, like that's what it turned into. So that's what that story goes back to. Is I got the best. And they got so mad. They were so, oh, that was great. You just had to be there. Then I found like hundred and fifty dollars too later in the parking lot, which made it even better. I love that you crochet. That is the yeah. part that I love. My grandmother taught me how to do that when I was a kid, but I forgot quickly. Yeah, no, it's fun, man. It's relaxing. I'll make hats for every one of you. <laughs> All right. Next question. And this is a pretty you know, interesting question. We don't have many questions about the night hawking scene very often, but Mr. Glenn Glover asks, I'm an up-and-coming night hawker from Scotland, but there's no competitive scene. How can I make it grow and become popular? I mean, basically, you just got to, you know... Use the forums, you know, the night hawking forums. You could um, probably make a you, subreddit and moderate that. Yeah. Now you've got to make a zany YouTube channel all about <laughs> night hawking and, yeah. and make sure that you pander and then you'll. You, It'll be you'll, as good. Over time, you'll, you'll get your YouTube channel really big. Yeah, and throw... then you can. Then you can create your own night hawking fan meetups and then you will have everything that you've I ever think, wanted to do. I think you got to start with doing parkour. Because that shit's big <laughs> over there. So start with parkour and then start interspersing night hawking vids. Um, on technique and things like that, you know, and then once you get that going, just switch the channel over. Once you've got them hooked in with the hardcore yep. parkour, there you go. And when you first <laughs> when you first start, you might want to try to just like get the local youth into it, you know, try to hit up some pubs and you know just yeah. be like, hey, look, if nobody's down for this, it's totally cool. But I just want to throw it out there. <laughs> Does anybody want to get really drunk? And before we leave the bar, go out in the parking lot, fist fight, you know, <laughs> really, really hard, and then fuck each other. <laughs> is anyone interested? Just putting it out there. Just throwing things against the wall and seeing them if they stick. Seeing if they <laughs> stick. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> um, yeah. Because I know some dudes also, Mr. Glenn Glover. I know some dudes in Scotland. Ross Geddes, he is totally up for this. So <laughs> don't, I mean, that Who's, guy's totally up for this. Splosey. Uh, Alex Lee D. I don't even know if some of these dudes are actually in Scotland, but I'm just going to throw them out there because they always tweet at me. Um, <laughs> Amelia, Emiliano, that guy on Nighthawk. Uh, so there you go. Just get, you know, you got to, like any other th- sport, you got to find some other people to play, you know, yeah. and then and then grow from there. Craigslist, you know, has some interesting stuff. I'm sure Nighthawking can get some kind of traction yeah. over oh, there. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I still I still say make a subreddit, Scotland Nighthawk. <laughs> So, last question for this week from KDZen18, repeat offender in the uh, Twitter questions segment. Um, if you could have Peter Molyneux perform any one of your everyday life tasks for you, such as eating, driving, or relations, what would you choose? For those who don't know who Peter Molyneux is, he's the dude who made the Fable games, and he's also Black and white. very pretentious. <laughs> he likes he likes to have these really big ideas for games that never, ever, ever come through in the actual games. He tends to make solid games that are very disappointing because of everything he promised. I think. I think. I driving. Know, driving would be, would be a butler. good one. Peter Molyneux. My butler. Just be my your chauffeur. Butler. My chauffeur. John, you're muted you again. He, he could he could do my aging for me if he wanted to. So he just, like, go way faster. Yeah, he's he's like fifty something anyway, so he could do that. He's got a head start. Yeah, he's good at it. <sighs> Um, He's experienced. I'd say being my waifu. <laughs> <laughs> my waifu. <laughs> Reminds me of the uh, the Bioshock video that you linked. <laughs> I, Bioshock Infinite Waifu Edition. I the now I now really want someone to get a Peter Molyneux body pillow. <laughs> <laughs> Just and take it on trips like, with it. Anime Peter, Peter Molyneux. Oh, Polly Nuchan. 
How I rob you. <laughs> <laughs> Someone with a shrine to him. Oh, Peter Sama. <laughs> people in chat are killing me. Um, you can customize the body pillows. Well, we're selling those. Cafe Press, get ready. KB Mod, Peter Molyneux. <laughs> body pillow covers. I'm going to get a Peter Molyneux body pillow. <laughs> I'm going to use it in between my legs while I sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Kawhi Mother New Senpai. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, uh, Brandon, Brandon just joined us, everyone. Did he? Really? He's in he was in channel. Uh oh. Uh oh. We're talking about Wafu's Brandon. I want okay. Peter Molyneux to uh, market my YouTube channel so then everybody can come and be very, very disappointed at the content. Like more disappointed than you can be on a normal level. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, he would hype it, man. He would get people know. there. They Nick Benton's be clearly the best use of Peter Molyneux, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my wife. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, God, I don't know, man. I'm trying to think. I wonder if the guy can cook. Well, he's yeah. English, why not? Swags yeah. he cooks. I Even English women can't cook, let alone the. Good I'd have Peter Molyneux go to the bar for me. And then tell you amazing stories when he gets home. About Imagine it. how many drunk Lights video out. game ideas he could have. Oh my goodness! <laughs> no, he would tell you about how awesome his bar run is going to be, and how he's going to get all these bitches, and like he's going to be the <laughs> life of the party, and he's going to get everybody singing along to Queen on the jukebox, and then none of it's going to happen. But it'll, <laughs> yeah. but it'll be an okay night at the bar. It just won't be that good. Yeah. <laughs> God, my friends would be so baffled when Peter Molyneux showed up instead. <laughs> but he talked about everything that I would talk about, but he used Peter Molyneux. <laughs> um, drunk Molyneux is the only kind, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well. Yeah, Nick, that. what are you doing? Nick cooking. is performing for Peter Molyneux, He's his cooking. waifu, his body pillow. I'm in the kitchen. I'm the kitchen gamer. <laughs> He's cooking. Cook. Cooking in the kitchen. Caught in the kitchen. God. <laughs> All right, well, that is it for this week's fo this week's show, folks. Big thanks to Mark and Eric for joining us this week. Um, and the streams this week will just be me, literally me, every night. That's it. Um, Dan is everyone, over else, everyone else is gone. <laughs> Skynet has not. been activated. Well, Blacklight will be, there. yeah, Blacklight will be on the emulation station, but every yeah, stream. Yeah, Hex, Hex is here too. Ah, I, I can Hex, help out. Hex said yeah, he will be out gone. needed. Hex said he will be gone Wednesday, so I will be doing the Wednesday stream. Oh, yeah, isn't he in I, California yeah. right now? Oh, no. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, Chaz, of course. Chaz is in Nolans, if you're following the oh, Finding no. Chaz phase. Uh, he almost Did you got know destroyed. that Lil Wayne is from Louisiana? Did you know? Uh, he, Chaz, no. is, Chaz should take a tour of Lil Wayne's uh, childhood home. We should get Eric to do a show sometime, for sure. Eric, stream. Eric could stream StarCraft because none of the rest of us are any good at it. <laughs> oh, yeah, they don't think I'm any good at it. Let's just put, let's get, let's get those cards on the table. Um, so, yeah, it'll be pretty much me this week with uh, Late Night with Nikon and also the Emulation Station, of course, Friday night. Yeah. Um, make sure to check us out. All our social media links, facebook.com slash kbmod, Twitter at kbmodgaming, and all our cool. Twitters are on the screen if you want to follow us individually. Um, and then of course stop by our forums and then we also have our merch which no one's wearing tonight but sometimes we do I've been mine, wearing that mine must have got lost in the mail yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I've been wearing that Nick Fenton we shirt on the, the, on the reg right? on streams but uh, make sure to follow us here if you liked what you saw tonight and subscribe if you truly truly enjoyed it <laughs> so, I was wondering you promotion <laughs> Here, guys, come to my stream, too, if you want. Come yep. on, just by every day or so. Yep. Room, Slash room, sweeper. room sweeper for Eric's yeah. stream. And, uh, yeah. We'll see you next week, guys, and I'll let you know about a post stream on the Twitters. So we will see you next time. Later, bros. Goodbye. So long. <laughs> <laughs>